everyone, thank you for another video. Thank you so much for bearing with me over the past couple of weeks. The reason that I didn't post a video last week will become clear during this video. It's another case study, which takes me a couple of weeks to get ready as I have to get all of the clips together as well as then going through and analyzing it. Before we get into this case study, we do have a few shout outs. So big shout out today to April Villas, to SMR Blocky, to Sophie, to uh, Haslingdon High School, and also to Hackney and Tower Hamlets Media Education. Thank you so much guys for subscribing. If you would like a shout out yourself because you've not had one but you are subscribed to the channel, pop me a message in the comment section below and I'll get you added to the list for next week's shout outs. If you haven't subscribed yet, please stay tuned to the end of the video where I'll tell you how to go about getting a shout out of your own. So today's video is going to be breaking down TLC's video for waterfalls. For those of you who have been with the channel for a while, this video is replacing Michael Jackson on the specification. So for those of you who are sitting your exams in the summer, or for those of you who have just started media in year 10, for the music video section of component two for paper two, you have to study both a male modern artist, a female modern artist, and then a traditional artist. For the past couple of years, the options have been between Duran Duran's Rio video and then Michael Jackson's Black and White, but they've replaced Michael Jackson with TLC. So this is the breakdown for their video, Waterfalls, for if you're studying that as your traditional artist. So going through the video then, it's quite a long video. It's another five minute video, which is quite indicative of the period. This is something that was quite common for the 90s, as very often the videos had additional film-like elements to them and were not just based around the song itself. We start off with something that was very similar actually to the Michael Jackson video, where we have a point of view shot and we're up in the clouds um, that then zooms in and getting closer and closer to a specific point, a little bit like in that Michael Jackson video. And as the shots become more high angle and we start to focus in on specific things like we have the aeroplane here and we can see the difference between sort of land and ocean. We as an audience expect to be taken to land. This is part of our sort of repertoire of elements if you like. We would expect to be taken over to land and then to go into a narrative and to follow this narrative through in, in the video. But that doesn't happen. Instead we're taken to water and as we're looking at the water the band themselves rise up out of the bottom of the water. Now obviously this provides a sense of anchorage to the title which is Waterfalls but more importantly it gives us some idea of the historical context. Back in the 1990s computer-aided design CAD or, or computer-aided graphics were relatively new and actually creating and crafting realistic water graphics were no was notoriously difficult um, and partly because of this and also because of the, the subjects that the video actually tackles the video was considered very very groundbreaking not only for its visual effects but also the messages that it tried to portray as well and it did actually win awards because of the design and because of the um, sort of messages that it was putting across so it as a video it, it achieved several awards now the band themselves obviously again contain sort of historical context and we have these recognisable tropes both from the R&B genre such as things like the, the combat trousers that the women are wearing but also um, the idea that they're sort of flowing elements and the layered elements of their clothing not only link to water but also link to this idea that it was a very 90s production. Now we have the image of the band themselves standing on the water, which is obviously linking to sort of biblical references. We have them standing on the water in several shots and that is cut and sort of spliced and sandwiched between shots of this journey that the audience are being taken on with the camera movement. So the camera is again traveling much like we had in that Michael Jackson video, traveling to a particular focal point. And the first focal point gives us one of the two narratives that happen within this production. So we're now the narratives of the production are kind of difficult to explain or it's kind of hard to put into um sort of an easy to understand sort of or exam style sentence. Basically the entire narrative of the video is about not chasing dreams blindly or not chasing things blindly without thinking of the consequences and within that we have these two example narratives that we're going to see within the video itself. Before we get there we have close-up shots of each of the members of the band. So each of them have sort of 
stage names that they're known by as well. So we've got um, Rhonda Chili Thomas. She gives indirect mode of address and she's the only one to give indirect mode of address at the beginning, which is quite interesting at this point. It could suggest that it's not necessary to create that connection with the audience. And in fact, it's more important to give that enigma by looking away from the camera. One of the things that's quite interesting is that comparatively to the rest of the, the group members, she could be conforming more to the stereotype of female representation because she was considered, particularly in the 90s, to be more feminine compared to the other members of the group. We then have Tion Tiboz Watkins, who is placed centrally. She's, pre she's placed centrally in pretty much all of the marketing and in all of the um, sort of campaigns that surround the band, so suggests that perhaps she has a greater importance in the group. She also gives direct mode of address to us as the audience, and obviously this then creates a connection that is important for the rest of the video because it helps to get the message across to us that the band are trying to portray here. Uh, Thomas and Watkins are the only two members of the group who are still alive. Lisa Left Eye Lopez, who is in the bottom of the screen that you're looking at now, um, she passed away relatively soon into the career of TLC um, and they haven't they never did replace her within the band itself so there's sort of more historical context that could be explored there that we will be looking at in another video. Now she displays a more alternative representation not only through her dress codes and her hairstyle which is completely different to the other two women but also the fact that her tattoos were on display. Now obviously that's not something that is uncommon today but we have to remember that this is a pro product of the 90s and in the 90s although it was more common for people to have tattoos for women it was considered less feminine and so it sort of subverts the expectation of what women were meant to be portrayed as and shows this increase in feminism um, by having these on show. The markings that you see on her face underneath her left eye are obviously a reference to her nickname as well which again we will go into in another video when we look at the more historical context of the band and this production as a whole. Now in between all of the shots of the band we do have this journey that we're being taken on and as the audience are being taken on this journey we get this overlay um, sort of watermark image of the clock. At the minute this presents a sort of enigma because we don't understand its significance, we don't understand why it's necessarily placed there and it seems out of place compared to everything that we've seen so far. This will become more apparent later on in the video and so it gives something for us to reflect back on when we get there. As we're traveling, the setting becomes clearer, particularly when we have this bird's eye shot where we see a busy American street. This obviously provides a sense of relatability to the audience. And because it's not something that is specific to a particular area, this could represent any part of America. It then makes the um, video more sort of all encompassing and doesn't necessarily alienate anyone because it's based in a particular area. The camera eventually slows down and the lighting becomes more golden, more high key. And the fact that it does seem to have this gold tint to it could reference the narrative that we're going to see, which centers around this need for money and the dangers that that can lead to. So that's potentially one of the interpretations here. And we see this car right in the sort of forefront of the frame. This looks like quite a nice car, it's quite a shiny car. And so again, linking to this idea of wealth. To contrast that, we see this young man in the centre frame. Now, because he's in the centre frame, this obviously indicates his importance. He's dressed in all black, which could be a reference to his death, which is about to come in the narrative as a whole. But it could also represent the negative aspects of the things that he's involved in and what he's about to do. And this dress code is particularly prevalent or is particularly noticeable when contrasted to his mother in the center shot. Now she's displayed in more high key lighting. We see that she looks more bright. She's sort of more golden while he's viewed in darkness in the shadows in the reflection of the window. And this creates binary opposition within the frame and within the narrative as a whole. And it could also illustrate the narrative by indicating which side us as an audience we should be supporting here. Now, in between all of this narrative, as I said at the beginning, we get these cut scenes where we go back to the band who are standing on the water. And the narrative here is broken or reinforced, depending on how you want to look at it, with the band themselves speaking to the camera. Now, this direct mode of address obviously indicates the importance of the message that they're delivering through the lyrics. And in this particular instance, with this particular narrative, we're focusing on the anti-drug message. This was really important back in the time and was quite a brave thing for 
for the band to do because the drug problem in the 90s was becoming quite prevalent and so they were one of the few bands to sort of female bands in particular to really tackle this message. Now Chile looks towards the camera here and gives direct mode of address which contrasts to what happened earlier. The more of the band who look towards the camera the more emphasis is placed on the overall message of the song because it's not just one person looking at us and speaking to us, it adds emphasis each time we get another of the three looking at us so that by the end of it this message really is kind of hammered home to us as an audience. We then have two extreme close-ups, one after another, as we go back to the narrative of the what will eventually be a drug deal. Through the extreme close-up in the hubcap of the car, we can see the reflection of the mother, and this helps to create an emotional reaction in the audience and gives them pause for sort of thought and time to think, particularly because, as we mentioned before, the extent of the drugs crisis in the 1990s meant that this was something that was particularly common for young people to get into. And this is reinforced by the over the shoulder shot, which again allows us to see the mother who is sort of desperately trying to get her son to stop and return to her. However, because we see him looking back at her, this could also connote and it could also suggest the fact that she is perhaps his conscious trying to conscience trying to get him to do the right thing by sort of being that voice of reason. However, in the next shot, we see this extreme close up and it gives the audience a greater understanding as to why the mother was trying to stop her son. So the historical context, again, as I've mentioned before, references the drug crisis of the 1990s in which many young men were recruited into gangs and were selling drugs or using drugs, trying to make money. Now, the spirit of the boy's mother is translucent when we see her here. And again, this was quite um, ahead of its time for, in a sense, by obviously indicating that this is a sort of spirit or conscience trying to stop him from making a mistake. In the distance we can see a gang sort of behind her waiting which could be referencing the further crime and negative aspects of society that this boy is about to get himself mixed up in. We also get a close-up shot of the men here and they have quite arrogant or smug facial expressions so perhaps at this point the audience infers that this guy is pleased with the deal that's about to occur. On a second viewing or having viewed the whole video, we could interpret this as a sort of knowing smile that he knows he's going to get one over on this young man. Now the camera focuses on the drug exchange and the emphasis here is on the money, which could imply that this is the cause of, of the issue or the root of the issue. And that it's this greed and this need for more and more money that lures in these young men. We also have an extreme close-up which has intertextual references to things like Western films where we have this sort of standoff almost and this indicates to us that violence is likely to occur next because we've seen it in other productions before. Now as the gang attacks, he too, this, this young man too, becomes translucent and this can indicate to us the fact that he has died. Now the fact that this doesn't take much time within the the video itself as you can see sort of from the progress bar at the bottom we're only about a third of the way into this song and into this video so it could be a reference to the fact that people people's lives are easily lost when dealing with drugs and when they sort of mix with drugs that this can lead to a, a quick loss of life now as the drugs are stolen the mother's spirit appears showing her distress and grief at how she's lost her son and it's emphasized further by the fact that she can't touch him and what's quite a poignant end shot is that we have an extreme close-up on this young man's lifeless hand now initially this was the hand that had the drugs and that was carrying the drugs now it's empty and it sort of indicates that nothing has come from this by him getting mixed up in drugs nothing good has come from this he literally has nothing left including his life now as we uh, cut back to the band themselves the camera starts to tilt so we don't see them straight on we see them at an angle um one message from the song is is then made clearer because we have a bigger focus and a bigger emphasis on the water in the background and the fact that it's tilted rather than the artists themselves and so this could refer and could emphasize this idea of waterfalls as is the title and this idea of not blindly chasing things without considering the consequences. So many people at the time didn't actually understand the reference to waterfalls within the song and this is something that, as I said, we'll go into in, a, in greater detail in another video when we start looking at the key concepts and the key contexts for the video. Um, but just so you guys get uh, that 
sort of bit of information now in preparation for the next video next week, a lot of people didn't understand what the song Waterfalls was referring to and why it was as important as it was. And the idea is that it's sort of metaphorical. The idea of chasing waterfalls means chasing things without thinking of the consequences and therefore getting yourself involved in risky issues or risky business without thinking ahead or without taking time to stop and think of the consequences. And that's reinforced again by the fact that we have this bird's eye shot, which makes this young man seem smaller. And because he's smaller, he then seems more vulnerable. And this emphasizes the risk that the young are placed, you know, the risk that they're put into within society. TLC's following was, generally speaking, younger audiences at the time. They were speaking to sort of 14, maybe 15 year olds to 18, 19 year olds were their primary demographic. And so this really is emphasizing to those young people why it's important that they take the time to think through their decisions before they blindly jump in. Now, following on from that narrative, which as we know has now ended, or we can infer has now ended, the camera begins to take us as the audience on another journey and we start to have these quick camera movements again. The city scene is contrasted with natural imagery of the countryside, which again could link to the idea of waterfalls because we're more likely to find a waterfall out in the countryside than we are in a big built up city. We also have the clock again, and this may suggest that time is running out now. We've seen how the clock ticked down and ticked down on this young man's on this young man's life and how he no longer has any time left and so we could infer that this clock is a metaphor for sort of time running out and then we get a new narrative which would add to that interpretation. Now in that centre shot although we don't have a shoulder technically it could be considered an over the shoulder shot because we get to see both characters here and we're sort of getting the camera positioned behind one of them. It in infers very clearly the fact that these two characters are quite lustful and this could lead to a deeper interpretation that perhaps considers a reference to the seven deadly sins. We've seen how greed and gluttony and sort of that want for money has led to sort of destructive consequences with the, the drug deal gone wrong. Now we're very clearly looking at lust and how this potentially is going to lead to disastrous consequences. The high angle shot that we get at the bottom shows the two people together, but we have some enigma here through the fact that we don't know whether this is a long term relationship, whether they are married, whether this is just a fling. We have no idea of the relationship really between these two characters. We have none of that backstory set up. And we start to get different cutscenes here. Not only do we get cutscenes like we had before between the narrative and the band who are standing on the water, but we also get sort of flash forwards to the man from this this couple looking quite ill. Now, the technical term for a flash forward is prolipsis, and this prolipsis is created through the high key lighting. We can tell that something is different here. We've gone from relatively warm, glowy, sort of golden glowing lighting that we had in the previous shot to this very bright, harsh, high key lighting. And some of the symptoms that he experiences as he's looking in the mirror are references to AIDS, in particular some of the lesions that he sees or starts to see on his face. And this is what made this video and this song particularly groundbreaking for its time. In the 1990s, although people were more aware of HIV and AIDS and they had a little more understanding as to how the disease was contracted and passed on from person to person, it was still a very taboo subject. It wasn't something that was discussed, in, certainly not discussed in mainstream media and certainly something that wasn't as widely understood and supported uh, as it is today. So for the band themselves, it was considered incredibly brave for them to make this part of the focus of their song. But it was something that the band advocated greatly. Safe sex was a message that they had been putting across almost right from the minute that they sort of emerged into the music scene. And one of the interpretations that we could have for this narrative is when we see t -Boz covering her face. And this could be indicative of the fact that many people in society, particularly at the time, turned a blind eye to the disease. And a lot of people, even though there was a greater understanding than when it sort of first emerged, a lot of people were still under the impression that this was something that would never happen to them. And obviously, 
didn't change necessarily change their behavior to put themselves in a safer situation. Now the band are viewed through several different camera angles here which helps to make their message all-encompassing because we don't just see them in one particular view. Also we get this showcase of their star personas at the same time. So this is one way of marketing the band by having them from these different perspectives and these different angles where you could take different still images and use them as part of the marketing of the group. As we cut back to the uh, narrative we see more intimate details about the couple and we get an extreme close-up which centers on the condom packet in the uh, man's hand. Now obviously this is the only protective measure against AIDS and other STDs and this is part of how the band were promoting safe sex right from the beginning of their music career. During their performances, Left Eye would often be seen with condoms attached to her clothing, so she'd often wear them attached to her trousers, attached to uh, her belt, or also being worn in her glasses as well, to try and make this part of people's daily lives, that try and encourage people to you know, be, take protection, to be safe. But the fact that the condom is brushed away provides a sort of relatable situation for many members of the audience at the time. And this would be something that would perhaps resonate more with the audience, the idea that we've got cutscenes here of the decision being made that then this couple are not going to use protection and then the con direct consequence of this when they see the man looking very poorly and obviously seeing how he's suffering. We also get a sort of foreshadowing of what's to come in a way because the bird's eye view of the two of them reveals almost this smoky sort of breath leaving the man. Now this could suggest that he is slowly losing his life, that he's slowly sort of taking his last breaths as, breaths, as it were. And as he moves towards the mirror, the photo frame that is very clear and very prominent, although it's not in the center of the frame, starts to change. In particular, the right hand side of that photo frame changes to reveal all of the partners that the woman has had. And this highlights the ease with which the disease can spread because all of the partners that she has slept with all now are at risk of catching HIV or AIDS. And the extreme close-up on the changing photo could emphasise, again, the many lives that are affected by this disease and adds emphasis and weight to the idea that this is not something that we should be ignoring, but something that we should be discussing. Particularly when we see the woman here. Now, although this is quite an interesting shot because we're actually looking at her reflection from the mirror, her facial expressions show how worried and how concerned she is by the fact that she is now affected by AIDS herself. We then get this location change to a waterfall, obviously providing anchorage to the title of the song and providing a contrast to the negative effects and the negative aspects of the narrative so far. And we do also get the band members materialising from the waterfall, which we see in the sort of final part of the video. Now this adds greater visual emphasis to the message as well as obviously the narrative that we get through the lyrics and through the two storylines that we've seen here. And we're actually taken back to the first storyline when we see the mother from the beginning again. Now her facial expressions sort of suggest either a numbness or a sadness and although we can tell that this is a different time setting because she's dressed differently, it's very much linking back to the beginning of the video itself. In a sort of role reversal though, we see the spirit of the young man now trying to touch and communicate with his mum, which he can't do given that he passed away earlier. And so this role reversal helps to indicate the seriousness of drug and drug related crime. And we end with not only this narrative, but also the narrative of the, the couple together. The man's picture has disappeared completely from the, the frame, connoting his death, the idea that he's no longer there. And as time continues, the woman's picture also disappears, which again, we can infer as being her dying. And in its place, we now have this condom sitting in front of the photo frame itself, placing this additional emphasis on safe sex and sort of suggesting that if this had been used, those two people would still be alive, they would still be around. So quite a serious narrative and quite a serious message behind a song that perhaps on first viewing might seem a little bit brighter or might seem, I don't know, a little bit 
more innocent but it is definitely got a, a more serious message to it and this is likely why the exam board has picked it as one of the texts for you guys to study we have quite a few key terms that came from the video so have a look through these make sure you understand what they mean if you don't know look them up maybe make some note cards or make yourself an, your own glossary we will be going through the key concepts and the key context next week looking at how we can break this down into media language industry representation all those sorts of things as well as the historical social cultural context for the artist and the time and then we'll have a look at things like the band's website although you don't necessarily need to know that for your exam it is useful and it does give you additional sort of revision techniques for looking at websites and the sort of things that you know we might need to take into account and then I'll be taking requests basically and doing revision videos so we're very nearly at the point where I think I have made a video for every aspect of the course if you haven't already do please subscribe hit the button below if you hit the notification bell then you get notified when I do post new videos you can also get in touch with me by leaving questions comments ideas or suggestions in the comment box below or through social media at media underscore revision on twitter or gcse media revision on instagram if you haven't had a shout out yet but you think you need one then let me know in the comments section below every person who subscribes will get a shout out and i will see you guys next week for another video